injury to that part of my body minus my upper T's. Uh, however, I don't want to go into detail, but um, I can tell you that you're going to be depressed. You're going to have negative thoughts. You're going to go through it and you're going to feel alone. And the best thing you can do is you can tell people around you that you feel isolated, you feel alone, and you're depressed. Um, and you can tell those people that you don't want them to tell you positive things. You want them to just listen to you. So when I'm hurting really bad, um, I don't want people to tell me, oh, it's going to be better or you're going to get through this. I just want somebody to say, you're right. It sucks. I'm sorry. It sucks. And give me a hug. But you have to realize that you need to tell the people around you that that's what you need from them. And I can promise you, you only need to tell them once um, and it will get better. And there's going to be a day where you're going to turn a corner. It's just going to take some time. It's going to take some time and you're going to have ups and downs. Um, and on top of that, uh, definitely talk to your doctor because Having depression after a major surgery is a real thing. It's where I got an antidepressants because of it. Um, so make sure you're talking and communicating with your doctor. If you're feeling depressed to the point where you can't quickly get out of it or telling people around you, hey, I feel this way and they're not making you help pulling you out of it, then make sure you go to your doctor and you tell them this. It's totally normal when you have an injury like that to get on a um, antidepressant that also helps your, your nerves. But it's gonna be, you're gonna be in a sad state. But believe in your body, believe in the process of healing, it'll happen. I feel great right now. I feel like I've turned a corner. Who knows? I could randomly in two days feel shitty. I don't know, but I can tell you that it so far it gets better. And also, um, don't forget to allow yourself to be lazy. Like I was depressed because I wasn't doing it, doing anything with my life because I was putting pressure on myself to do things. And then all of a sudden I realized like I need to stop putting pressure on myself to work or to be active because I can't change the situation I'm stuck in. But you know what I can do? I can say, I'm not going to brush my teeth today. I'm not going to wash my hair today. I'm not even going to shower today. And I can just lay down and just be completely lazy and I can accept it, right? And you may think that's gross or weird, but when you accept yourself in the state that you are, you have an interesting calm that happens to you to where you're actually able to rest and get the rest that you need. So you have to just accept the situation and that might take you a couple days or a week or it's a couple weeks. But I literally, I literally didn't shower for 13 days after I got out of the hospital because I just wanted to accept myself in how I was. Like I was like, I didn't brush my teeth for like nine days at one point. And I know this sounds gross, but I'm someone that's always taking so much care of my body and stuff to where I was putting so much pressure on myself to be like, wow, you need to be healthy. You need to be doing this. You need to be pressuring yourself to where after talking to my therapist, my therapist was like, all you need to do is get up and do one thing a day. And if that's feeding yourself and getting yourself water, you're good. You don't need to put any more pressure on yourself. So just remember that you only need to do one thing a day to have a successful day when you're healing from a traumatic experience. And that can be putting water in your body or feeding yourself or just brushing your teeth. And that's all you need. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Get On to LP. Your resolution is to become a full-time YouTuber. Fuck yeah, I hope that happens for you. Oh, you're sick. I'm sorry, Harsh. I hope you get better. Danish Kings, thank you. It's gonna be my year. This is a blessing. Yeah. 
my day is a success when I wake up from my nap in time for bed. <laughs> but you have that one success, so that's great. And also, like, just just get random tasks. Like, get yourself a coloring book and put it next to your bed. And if you only color for one minute out of the day, but you have that coloring book that gets your mind into just randomly coloring for one moment, even if it's just one moment and you never use it again, you have one moment where you just did something else, you know, do that. It doesn't have to be good art for it to be good art. The best type of art is normally not good art. My New Year's resolution lasted 10 days. Cave in and helped work by OT, which I wanted to cut back this year and focus on myself to the bomb. Next time I'll say no. Good job. You will. I can't show the Xeno statue. Um, I will I will move it up and, and show it next time. It's very delicate and I've been drinking. So if you ask me tomorrow, I will, but it's very delicate. I don't want to pick it up when I'm drinking. I've had it fixed three different times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Aw, thanks, prodigal. Thanks. But I'm but as a disabled woman, I respect the hell out of you. I hope this year is full of healing. Thank you, Meg Raxo. Thank you. I'm sending love and healing your way too. Thank you. Yeah, I have a tremendous, tremendous respect for anybody who's going through chronic pain. I have a tremendous respect for anybody who has to live with any type of illness or ailment. It's like wow it's 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 amazing i mean some of some of the people i idolize are just like i have this guy zoomy in my chat that i literally like i look up to him because he's traveled he has a lot of um disabilities and he travels you know he's traveled all over the world and he's always happy in the discord i really think he's such a great person and i feel like a lot of people with disabilities or who have a lot of um, ailments. I really feel like tend to be a, a happier person and I really, really think that's admirable and I'm just like, wow. I kind of, I went on, I went online and I started looking at my surgery and I ran across so many younger people that had surgery similar to mine because of scoliosis. And it really kind of slapped me in the face because I was like, wow, I keep saying why me and I keep being like pushing myself down when there's so many younger people that are younger than me getting the same type of soul surgeries just because they were born with scoliosis. And the fact that I'm sitting here like, woe is me. And they're just happy to like be able to stand up straighter really shocked me and uh, kind of put me in my place a little bit. Yep, totally. Until there's Twitch. Almost three weeks since you broke your back. Beef, have you uh, have you stood up yet? Have you walked yet? It's the scariest thing taking your first steps after having back surgery. I literally, I told the hospital uh, people, I was like, I'm not walking. And the next day I didn't do PT. I was like, nope. I'm not walking, not at all. Mm, thank you, scummy mummy. 